So as a Tesla investor, what do you actually think of an Alibaba investor? Okay, hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today, I got one of the more famous YouTubers in Singapore um, on my channel. So his name is Kelvin. So he runs a YouTube channel called Kelvin Learns Investing. And then he shares a lot of um, topics regarding personal finance and even investing as well. So Kelvin, welcome to the channel. Maybe just want to share to some of my audiences because um, I do have quite a different wide range of audiences that might have not seen you. Maybe you want to do a self-introduction and how do you start out investing? So thanks Chiking for inviting me. I uh, actually started all the way back in 2016 for investing. Right. Uh, I started by investing, it's not investing, I started by gambling in the <laughs> stock market okay. where I tried to buy low, sell high, but I ended up buying high and selling low. Right. So after losing about five to eight thousand dollars, I stopped investing for one year. Then later on, I moved on to dividend investing and index funds. And most recently, I went into the US stock market during right. the 2020 crash. And I started buying Tesla ever since. Right. So like you said, right, you said um, you started investing into Tesla. And for those avid viewers that also follow Kelvin's channel, you know that he's almost always into a Tesla stock and his entire portfolio, I think a large part, like 80, 80% is in Tesla 90 or 90% is in Tesla. <laughs> So, so in that case, how, how did you end up from dividend investing then to uh, uh, going into the US market and going into all in into Tesla and not just diversify away? So like any young investor, I'm always chasing for growth. Right. Uh, the reason is, okay, it's a bit because I'm greedy. Right. But it's also because I'm, I have a target of retiring by 45 years old. Mm. 1 million by 45. Okay, I started dividend investing, but I found that it wasn't giving me the returns that I want. Like it was giving like four to six percent a year, safe and steady from BP. Right. So then I later moved on to index funds because I realized that index funds could give me a much higher return. Uh, then in 2020, I saw this guy, Chicken Genius. Many of you guys will know him. Right. He says that to buy Tesla because it could give like what fifty percent return. Right. Value investing is dead. Right. It's not late, by the way. <laughs> So that's when I started to enter Tesla uh, and ever since then I trimmed off all my dividend and dividend stocks and index funds and started moving on into Tesla and just so happened I bought it near the bottom I didn't intend it to be one of my biggest holdings now it just so happened Tesla went up and right now after all the market crash all my other stocks uh, tanked by what? 50, 70 percent. Right. So but that's how. It's still holding yeah, up. Quite it's still well. holding up because right. I bought it at the bottom. The rest I bought it at the top. Right. So that's how I ended up with such a big Tesla holding. Okay. Then maybe can you walk us through the process of how you actually build conviction in the Tesla other than watching Chicken Genius video, of course. But watching part. Chicken Genius video, <laughs> but he left. Actually, the, the, the way I do it is a bit different from people like Chicken. Uh, I call it secondary research right. where I base my research on other people's research and for Tesla it's much easier because there's a lot of coverage right. like what solving the money problem, Tesla daily, right. uh, stuff like that. So I base my research on their research but the danger of doing so is that if the stock tanks and right. you are, if you're not familiar with the stock, uh, you'll be paper, sell, paper handing. Right. So uh, late last year, I started doing research on Tesla. Okay. Uh, like to build my conviction on the stock la, so that I've, I don't have to blame anyone if the stock tanks. And going forward, right now I still don't know anything about uh, discounted cash flow. Right. Going forward, I plan to include that into my uh, valuation model okay. for Tesla. So that's how I build conviction right. on and on. La. I think for discounted cash flow, there are quite a lot of like more famous YouTubers out there. They all post up or you can even buy their courses or whatnot. Right. Then they, they, they just put their discounted cash flow on for Tesla right on the public and sometimes I, I, I itchy fingers and I have nothing better to do. I'll go in and try to scrutinize some of the assumptions. And there's a reason why I'm not in, in into Tesla currently. Um, I do I do disagree from time to time some of the assumptions that they make into because like they said, right, if um, your your input is not not good, your output will be will be will be will be um, different as well. So so in that case, um, there are some issues that I will disagree with. But of course, I think Tesla is still a great company. I think the execution is spectacular. I think in, in terms of how, how the company is so resilient in such a time, I have no questions asked why it still remains at such a high valuation. But of course, as an investor, I, I have my own principles that I want to follow too, which is why I'm currently not, not into um, Tesla. But maybe next time, we, we don't know. Yeah, if, if so about that, right? There, there are some like ARC ETF giving me like 6,000 in right. five years time, right. four years time. Right. Personally, I think that kind of valuation is 
a bit crazy okay. in my opinion okay. because they are factoring in stuff like FSD mm. uh, into their model right to me like even Elon Musk doesn't know when it's going to come out and uh, is factoring in it to come out around 2024 2025 right like uh, if that uh, model fails definitely Tesla can't reach 6,000 mm. so I'm actually aiming for like even 2,000 or 3,000 uh, Tesla by that price okay. uh, by that year la. right so I'm a bit more bearish compared to most Tesla investors right 2,000 3,000 actually that's already a 2.5 3x 4x in, in, in four years actually that, that Kager is quite spectacular really if you were <laughs> to put it from that perspective yeah and Maybe I also wanted to know, right, um, for FSDs personally, I, I'm, because I'm quite entrenched in the China market because I have vested interest, right? So I, I believe Taitu's Apollo Arm, they already have gotten the license in a few Chinese, pro Chinese provinces to actually run their full, full self-driving, which is really no, no drivers at the car seat yeah. and then they, they just continue running. So I'm actually looking forward to be able to go to China as well to really explore it on my own to see whether is it as good as what people are saying. And, and that's one part. So, it, it might come earlier, it might come later, who knows, um, but, but it's, it's really only time will tell. Yeah. So maybe I just wanted to ask also, right, on your Tesla, right, um, on your Tesla position, do you have an exit strategy on your Tesla position or like, maybe like you said, two, three thousand in 2025, are you going to sell it or what are you going to do with your <laughs> position? So Tesla, the thing about Tesla is that people are chasing, people are buying it because of high growth. Right. So what happens when the growth stops? Right. You can see happening to Netflix uh, and a lot of companies right now, right? Right. But for Netflix specifically, they are, I believe their growth is almost there. They have already tapped into the market, uh, their total addressable market. Right. And right now, there are a lot of competitors coming in. So that's why you see their top stock price tank by like 70% mm -hmm. in the past few months. For Tesla, this, this will definitely happen if their growth slows down and all the competitors cash up. So I will sell if their growth slows down. Okay. But for Tesla, they still have three more s curve coming up. Uh, full self-driving, energy and the last one is uh, robotics right then if they can continue on with all these s curves then great luck that's like can reach what 100k right. probably probably not <laughs> but if they fail at any of these s curves it will definitely hang by a lot like right. what 50 percent right. more than that so uh, i will keep a close eye on on their progress and will sell once they reach the end of the S-curve or they fail to achieve any of the S-curve. Like. Right, understand. So, so in, in that case, I think you're monitoring more of the growth of Tesla yeah. and to see whether the S-curve actually materializes or come, comes, comes to life and comes to fruition, yeah. right? So, so I think, I think that, that is also something that I'm concerned with. That I, it's true, I think I saw that curve before, that, that, that drawing before. But then the problem is how, how true or how quick they're yeah, able to, to unlock it. We, we don't know. Because yeah. now I also can draw multiple curves for Alibaba, <laughs> but everything is only I say, right? That there is no, they need to prove it to the world that they can, right. they can be able to unlock value from there as well. So maybe then I wanted to pivot over, because I believe now you are in your 30s. So um, it's not a very young age, it's not a very old age as well. Oh. So you're in the middle, right? Yeah, you're considered like a middle working age. adult. Yeah. I wouldn't say middle age, but um, yeah. So in, in that case, right, I think as you grow older, you are probably a, li a little bit more risk averse and you try to diversify away. So I, I just want to pick your brains and to understand, are you intending to diversify away some of your portfolio or are you looking at other companies to buy into as well as of like today in this market? So to give uh, context, la, right now my portfolio is like entirely disruptive innovation. Right. Tesla, RK, ArcG, Square. Right. And all these stocks don't do well when the market is bad. Right. It was doing well where in 2020 when what, Jerome Powell is printing a lot of money. Right. But right now, when interest rate is going up, uh, what, uh, inflation, wars, these kind of stocks won't do well. So, uh, and I realized my mistake. So I'm intending to convert part of it to safer stocks. Right now, I'm targeting those safe tech stocks. La. Right. Is it safe or not? I don't know. Okay. I, I know it's the top. La. So I'm just... Uh, I will be pivoting over to those tech stocks like Google, Amazon, uh, Facebook? Facebook, Apple. not really. Okay. Uh, Apple, yeah, right. Apple. So, to make it much safer. Okay. Uh, then after that, I will see how to rebalance everything. Will you ever go back to dividend investing again, like buying a Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson? You're more cyclical, <laughs> defensive. You know that in 20 years' time, they're still going to be here. Might not be... Might not be the biggest company, might not give you the greatest return, but I think in today's market especially, you can see that how strong those P 
people are rid ridiculing Coca-Cola having a what, PE of 27 and then you look at Google or Facebook <laughs> having a PE of 15. It's, it's ridiculous. But yeah, I think, I believe there is a reason why people want to diversify also. So will you still go back, revisit um, old, old time dividend investing and, and more safer stocks in this so, case? So actually this question, um, it depends. It's, it's not necessary will. Okay. Because first, but when I reach old age, I will already have CPF income. Right. And second, since if I'm still doing YouTube, I will have YouTube passive income also. Right. right. So the question is, do I need the dividend income at the time? Okay. Uh, the answer is I don't know. Because right now I'm actually selling options right. uh, for income, which has a much higher yield compared to dividend stocks. Right. And I'm also considering investing in property at that time. Mm. So, I don't know. Uh, if, if all my property fails, <laughs> all my YouTube fails, then probably I will consider dividend investing. Okay. Because it's almost a sure earn kind of thing okay. in Singapore. Okay. Uh, but otherwise, I will consider other forms of uh, getting, a, getting a passive income. Right. I think, I think specifically, right, like what um, Kelvin has shared, there are a lot of options um, on the table. I think don't be too tunnel vision into thinking that uh, only dividend stocks, um, you can buy dividend stocks when you're old. I think there are many other ways and alternatives and it depends on how you are as an investor. Yeah. Sometimes some people just prefer dividend income. Some people just like an investment property, even though you need to leverage and stuff like that. So mm. really depends on how you want to conduct your affairs as an individual. So Kelvin, I think just now you actually did share that you actually on a monthly basis, you do generate income from your option position, right? Yeah. So only thing that I'll do is I'll sell long-term lead puts because uh, it's a cash secured put. So right. I know that I want to own the stock, but I usually sell long-term because I know the market is quite crazy in today's time. Right. And I'm comfortable with owning X shares um, at X price. So that was my position and, and how I think about options. So now, especially when the market, one day can go up 10%, one day go down 10%, this kind of movements, right? How are you positioning yourself to to capitalize whatever volatility you have in options or, or is this a good time to still sell or to do wheel option to do the wheeling strategy etc so for wheeling specifically i don't really do it right uh, i used to do it but i found that uh, just by holding long term will give you a better return than uh, wheeling your options right because because you have a call right at the top it's, right. it limits your growth when there's a huge rebound right so uh, nowadays, I don't do much wheeling. As for uh, selling puts and selling costs, for selling costs, I'm selling at the much nearest strike price mm. because I'm bearish right now. Right. I believe that the market will tank, so that's right. why I put it at the much nearer. Previously, I was selling at, for Tesla, previously I was selling at like 30% price distance right. because Tesla has been able to go up 30% in a month. Yeah. But right now, I sell it at around 20% price distance. Okay. Uh, it's not 100% foolproof. Tesla may suddenly rebound the right. next day also. Right. So, but, uh, so that's what, that's for cost. And in return, I will get a higher premium right now. Right. Uh, and for puts, right now I'm a bit wary because uh, I believe the market is going down. So for puts, I'm not doing it as aggressive right now. I'm, okay. I'm selling a much further strike price because my intention is not to get uh, a sign. Right. My intention is only to earn the premium. Um, right. So I'm a bit wary right now like, for puts. Okay, so you sell both calls and puts, but more calls than puts if I can put it that way, right? Uh, it's the, it's the, for calls, it's a cover call, so right. it's about the okay. same amount as my stocks. Okay. For puts, it's, how much, it's just based on how much uh, cash that I have. Like. I, think, I think also when from that sharing and from my own understanding, right? because uh, Kelvin's entry price for Tesla is extremely low. So even if you get called away, your profit, you, you actually do, rec do realize quite a, what, quite a huge chunk of profit, right? Uh, if, if like, if touch wood that you really got yes, to but if Yes, but if Tesla goes up, I will right. be missing out on a lot of gains. Right. Because uh, the, the only time that I will get called away is when Tesla shoots up. Right. Because I'm selling at 20% price distance. Right. Tesla won't just stop at 20 if okay. it ever goes up. I understand. Yeah, so be okay. careful. I <laughs> understand. So, especially in volatile times, right? Um, this kind of movement, 10, 20%, it's on big fang stocks, by the way, it's crazy. The yeah. Means that if you really extrapolate, so for example, like we take uh, Google's market cap or Amazon's market cap, they're at 1.2, 1.5 trillion. 
So if, if a 10% movement is 150, 120, 150 billion movement. Yeah. 120, 150 billion is, is 10 of Palantir's movement, by <laughs> as in 10 of whole Palantir's market cap moving up and down. And, and, and it's, it's crazy. Or at least it's half of Alibaba's market cap that's moving in, in one trading day. So, so that's the amount of volume of, of, of um, um, in terms of capital that is moving in and out of companies. And which is why it's, it's quite a crazy time. So I, I, I don't, I currently I'm not doing any short term, short term positions or I don't have short term positions in, in, in any, any stocks um, to, to earn the premium. But yeah, yeah I, I, that, that's my own part and, and how, I, how I position myself. So um, always take everything you see on the internet as a pinch of salt, not financial advice. <laughs> so do whatever you're comfortable with. Right. So maybe now I'll pivot over because I know most of my viewers are Alibaba investors. So I have a very, uh, a very interesting question that I wanted to ask. So as a Tesla investor, what do you actually think of an Alibaba investor? What do I think? <laughs> right. So right at the start, I've, my impression of Alibaba investor is that they are, they are boomers. Right. But you think it's not the boomer. <laughs> so uh, I went to dig a bit deeper lah, because I wanted to find out like, what, why are people buying Alibaba right now? Right. Uh, and I found that, wow, <laughs> Alibaba is actually dominating in a lot of sectors in China. Uh, three out of four sectors. And the good part about Alibaba now is that they are cheap now. <laughs> After all the crash, I believe it has crashed like what, 70%? Right. Or, or more? Yeah. yeah. So um, the risk to reward ratio is probably high. If you believe that the Chinese government is not going to do anyhow right. weird stuff right. to Alibaba. La. If you ignore that part, or if you understand that part, then probably Alibaba is a good investment. Okay. So I see the point of why people are buying Alibaba now, right. instead of Tesla. Right. Because uh, they are more value investors. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are not chasing the hype, la, I would say. Right. Yeah, so they are more level-headed. La, <laughs> okay, interesting. I think that's a, that's a very interesting perspective. Uh, I would definitely say that I'm a value investor because I'm actually interested in Tesla. It's just that I'm not very interested in the valuation today, but I would be a happy Tesla shareholder if the, the, the price comes up. Or you know the American show if the price is right. So yeah. that's, that's how I position myself. So maybe then I also wanted to just uh, pivot a little bit away um, after understanding your position, your Tesla position and Alibaba position, right? I wanted to ask more about your own channel. So what are your upcoming plans for YouTube and, and where do you see yourself um, in this YouTube career and, and whatever you're doing in YouTube today? So uh, originally my, pla- my reason for starting YouTube is, uh, there's a story behind it. Right. So I had the tendency to share stuff with my friends because mm-hmm. I'm naturally a saver. Right. I'm interested in finance stuff. So I will try to find the best credit card, best savings account. Uh, then with that knowledge, I'm like, wow, look at this. You can earn 1% more on your savings, but my friends were not interested. Right. So like, there's this fr- frustration in me. La. Mm. Like, I need to share this to someone. Okay. And my wife is not interested also. <laughs> so what to do? So I started a YouTube channel. Right. Uh, that was around, I started watching YouTube uh, finance channel around 2016 when mm. all the big YouTubers came out, like right. Graham Stephan, Nick right. Karin. So around 2020, I have this thought like, like if people want to watch them, and Singapore doesn't have much people. Right. So like, there's this market. So I like, and to win my frustration, so I went into YouTube lah. So that's how I, how I started. Okay. And uh, go- along the way, I found that it's a good platform to let me learn stuff and share stuff. So to your question lah, like, uh, in future, I'm planning to look into crypto stuff, like DeFi stuff and uh, options strategies, even more crazier option strategies lah. Right. Uh, and monetize it mm. because I can sh- learn, uh, I can try doing it and just share all my knowledge onto YouTube. La. Right. So uh, that's my plan going forward. La. Okay, understand. So apologies guys, um, it started raining and we needed to shift um, to a sheltered area. So let me just continue on with the last few questions before I end off the interview. So likewise, like many other guests that I have on the channel, I like to ask them this parting question. Uh, because I want to know how they're thinking, what's the state of mind, especially when the market is so volatile today. So Calvin, what is currently keeping you up at night? In life, maybe, or uh, even in the market, or your portfolio, etc. What's keeping up, me up at night? Uh? Why is Chitin posting so many Alibaba videos? This is kidding. Actually, it's not about me, it's more about my kid. Right, like, right now, we already have uh, all this kind of stuff happening, right? Interest rate high, uh, inflation, the war going on. And 
further on there's still what uh, global warming so I am sort of worried like what's the future like for them right now we are in one of the most peaceful periods ever like the Cold War just ended around what 1991 or something like that uh, and since then we are at relatively at a more peaceful era so going forward what, what can happen the war tree uh, famine uh, rising ocean levels and all this kind of stuff lah. so I'm a bit worried like what my kids future will be like lah. so that's what keep me up at night okay actually that's that's also probably why a lot of investors are invested in Tesla right because whatever they seek to seek to achieve and whatever they seek to um, the, the challenges that they're trying to tackle are the big macro challenges that um, no other companies that are profit driven will think about as well because um, yeah these are very complex and very complicated issues and, and I, I personally don't have an answer to it as well but yeah it is what it is and um, I would suppose that I would also be worried for it when I have kids in the future so maybe just to end off and the conclusion to this entire video uh, because Kelvin is considered one of the more successful YouTubers and content creators out there do you have any advice um, for people for any future aspiring content creators like myself for example uh, three advice first one if you want to start just start uh, don't care about the head because right now right at the start nobody cares about you at all so nobody is still going to even hate you right at the start second advice uh, if you want to start just start posting uh, one video every week for maybe one to two years in total you have about 104 videos then in every video uh, you try to improve just one thing uh, like maybe you get a better lighting get a better mic uh, get a better script and improve your talking and so on and over 104 iterations at the end you will find that you will be a much better YouTuber uh, don't just ignore everything about subscriber first uh. the better you are uh, the more value that you can give your channel will grow in return so that's my second advice and for the third advice if you really want to start uh, try to find out like what people like about you like for maybe myself I think I'm a funny guy so maybe that's what people attracted what that, maybe that's what attract people to you and for TK maybe he's good at valuations so that's what people are interested in seeing that about him so find out what's your strong point and how do you leverage on it all. So that's a trick of what's there. Okay, Ken, thanks so much Kelvin and for those of you who are interested, I'll leave the link to his channel below. Uh, please check him out but he's a lot bigger than me so we probably have quite a lot of overlap audience as well. So with that, I'll see you in the next video but more importantly, I'll see you on the moon. Goodbye! Bye.